Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. This week I want to grout Chester and paint the edges and just finish it up so I can send it out. And finish piecing this wildflower mosaic. I just have a little bit more to go up at the top. And a bunch of mandala substrates to prepare. So I have to transfer the design onto the substrate so that we can work on the mosaic. And I'll be using carbon paper. I'm ready to grab this. And I'll be using two colors, light gray for this area. I didn't want to make it white because I do want the fur to be defined. And this will dry much lighter than it is. Charcoal color, it's not black black, it's a soft black. And I'll be using this for the rest of it to unify it. That's it. I'm using the no tape method here, which basically means I have to be really careful when I'm cleaning it up to make sure it doesn't contaminate the other areas. Just got a package from Mosaic Art Supply. So let's take a look. It's a pretty quick turnaround. Look at here. It is the tiles that will go on the edges of the mandalas. Look at all these great colors, all cool colors. Blues, purples, greens. I'll lay them all out and show you what I've got. All right, so here they are. I've got five blues, five greens, one teal, can kind of go either way, and five purples. And here they are out of the bag, so you can see the colors a little bit better. The purples, a couple of which are iridized. The greens, there's the teal on the middle there. And the blues. An interesting tidbit about this, I measured the circumference of each of them so that I would know the linear length that I had to cover. And these, I think it covers two per inch if you space them a little bit apart. And so when I went to order, it was twice the circumference of my project a year ago. So they both are 15 square feet but the other one had three big ones. This has 15 small ones, so there's twice as much edge on the 15 small ones as there was on the three big ones. Anyway, according to my calculations, this should be enough to cover the edges, but if I really have to, I can order more. It's a local company and it's quick turnaround. That's it. I'm ready to tackle the rest of this wildflower project. And I'm gonna start by adding this little highlight piece on the fence because I wanna put leaves here, but it's important to put the part that's in front, which would be the fence, 
in first so that when you fit the pieces around it, uh, you don't encroach on that area. So I've already cut this little leaf and then the other half I might have to adjust. Yeah, see, I didn't cut it enough, so I'm glad I put it in the right order to nip down that edge. I really do like the dark behind there, so I might put it, make it a little bit darker on this side over here than the rest of it. There, that's nice. There we go. So this is the green glass that I'm using for the leaves. And the glass for the background is simply the other side. Isn't that nice? Today that I am unable to get as clean of cuts as I'd like with my lepinets here so it's time to rotate the blades so what I do is I mark them and then they have a little allen wrench that comes with it so you just loosen it it's so easy to just loosen it oh my goodness let me try loosening this one All right, it takes some real effort. Here's my tip of the day. I put on an oven mitt because the problem was the Allen wrench was cutting into my hand when I put a lot of pressure on it. So I'm using the oven mitt so that it doesn't do that. There we go, this one's loose. Let's tighten it while I'm at it. So what I do is I turn it down just a little bit. I always move it towards the inside. glove on and see if I can loosen this one. Ah, got it. Woo, those were tight. So this one I moved down a little bit as well and then just tighten them up. And they're good to go.
going to look quite a bit different when I go to grout it because there'll be some darker parts and more definition. I'm transferring the design of my mandalas onto the substrate using the template and a ballpoint pen with transfer paper underneath the template. And then once that's done, I take a Sharpie and trace over the design just to darken it up so we can see it better. That's it. I'm also making any final design changes at this time, just little adjustments, mostly making some of the areas a little bit different, tweaking them so that they'll be easier to put glass in. That's it. I'm about to grout this, but before I do, because there were so many small pieces, I'm going to flip it just to make sure, kind of give it a tap, just to get any shards out and make sure that everything's glued in, looking good. I'm using Mad Pay Grout in black, but this one is not a true black, it's a soft black. I'm still working on transferring the designs onto my mandala substrates. I usually work on two or three at a time and then I'll stop and pick it up later.
I have spent all week tracing these and now they're all done. Woo! The next thing I need to do is make sure that I have enough glass for each one of these. And step one is I tried to put some glass rounds on each one. And those in particular, I can at least place on the mandalas and make sure I have the correct number. So I'm gonna do that next. Some of these will have frit balls, not all of these will have frit balls. Next week I will be making the frit balls, but right now I don't have them. And you may have noticed I'm adding a touch of yellow, orange, and red. So I'm trying to keep the same sort of theme that's going with the ones that exist on the wall, but these are gonna have a little bit of their own flair because they're gonna have a touch of red, yellow, and orange, even though they will mostly be Cool colors, green, blue, and purple. That's it. I ended up switching these and putting blue in the center of this one because this one's way more leafy and it sort of was calling for green. The, the color of the gems, these glass pieces, is going to be the main color on each of these mosaics, except for the big three. It's going to be the opposite. So the main color on that one is going to be green. The main color on this one will be blue and on that one will be purple. And that is because this one looks really leafy. This one is crying out blue to me and that leaves purple for that. I wanna talk for a minute about color selection because it's not 100% random. I do have a bit of a plan, although it might seem like I'm a little crazy if I tell you. For instance, I chose purple for this one because it looks spider webby and that reminds me of purple. This one looks blue to me. Let me see which other one. Oh, this one is definitely green because it's very leafy. And this one looks kind of paisley and that screams purple to me. Um, this one looks tulipy and I think it should be green. Lots of greenery. And then this one is a little bit flamey and I think it would look nice with purple. So that's sort of how I figure out my colors. It's really nice to do mandalas because I can use whatever color I want. I just kind of go for a contrast between the areas so that they'll be defined. That's this it. This one kind of look like alien antennas and I thought it needed to be green. All right, just like the other project, I will be painting the edges of this to finish it up and wiring the back. But I also- I have been enjoying this mosaic sample project that I made a few months ago in my kitchen on the counter. I have never finished the edges, so it is about time to finish that up because I'm tired of looking at those raw edges. how I finish these. I've been using acrylic paint because that's what I have, but this paint is expensive and I think latex paint would work just as well. So I'm going to get myself some black latex paint. And I don't always paint the back, but when I do, it's important to have your strokes go along with the grain of the wood, just so you have a smoother finish and it gets in all the crevices. And then something I haven't been showing because of the time lapse is that I do go back and touch up the edges where I've painted just to make sure that everything is completely covered. Occasionally one of these mosaics will have a little area on the front that does not get covered in glass or grout. And I will go and make sure that all those areas are touched up with this. Here's an area right underneath this glass that the lip of the wood is showing. And so I'm just gonna touch that up. I'm wiring the back of this 
And probably the first thing you wanna do is double or triple check that you have it right side up so you don't wire it upside down. So this is the top, this is the bottom. We're good to go. I'm gonna come down one third of the way and on this, which is 12 inches, that's easy to measure, it's four. I'm gonna come in just a little bit. So right there and right here. And the next step is drilling a pilot hole. So I just have a little tiny bit here and I'm gonna drill down over my little spot. That makes it easier to sink the screw as well. Then I change out my bit, the screwdriver bit. Now this is half inch plywood, and so I can use a screw that is this length that came in a kit with the with the D rings. But if I had quarter inch, I would have to use a shorter screw. And a nut is how I usually do it to raise it up so that there's more distance and it doesn't pop the glass off the front. So I just now can place the screw right in the hole and that makes it so much easier to drill in. Now for a piece that's relatively small like this, I have been wrapping it around, going under, and then wrapping it over rather tightly six to eight times. And that works well when it's something that's light like this. But if you had a much bigger piece and you weren't using, say, a French cleat, you might wanna use a some type of hitch knot so that it doesn't come undone, so it doesn't slip out. This potentially, if the weight was really great, could slip out. And I pull it as taut as possible and then wrap it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cut it as close as I can. Wire cutters get pretty close. And then I do come back in with needle nose pliers and make sure that the wire is not sticking out so no one gets pinched if they happen to pick it up by the wire and touch where that edge is. There! Now if I really want to, I can hang this on the wall. But for now, I'm going to put it right back where it was. Only now I don't have to look at the rough edge. Yay. And if I wanted to frame this, I could put it in a floater frame and those edges would recede because. That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.